slide. <laughs> oh, we just started recording. Got it. So um, just again, just to review, thank you everyone for um, joining us on the meeting. And is it possible to advance to the next slide? Yep. Okay. Um, so can we do the next one? Because I think I just wanted to review logistics a little bit. Okay. So, so we scheduled the meeting to end around 8.30, certainly, um, um, but we want to make sure that everyone's questions are answered and that we give um, honor to um, what may come up in the meeting. Um, we ask everyone to please mute your microphone and we're asking individuals who have questions to please enter them in the chat. We'll monitor that throughout the session and have um, a question and answer at the end. Um, and so if we go back, I can talk about the agenda. Um, so we're going to talk tonight about um, kind of the journey that um, we've had uh, since, since 2020. Um, there's information to share about the new ballot, um, some additional information about restarting adjudication and building the organization. Um, and then we'll end with the questions and answers at the end. And so I think we can do the next slide. Great. So um, in general, we wanted to start with a point in time to talk uh, about the January 2020 um, theater, theater award show. Um, it was one of the high points of um, the NHTA history. It was a sold out event at the Capitol Center in Concord, which I guess is the first time that that's ever happened. Is that right, Justin? Yeah, that was, that was our largest audience. Yeah. Um, we, at that time, we had the highest number of participating companies um, in the NHTA. Um, further accomplishments also include there were non-on-site nine on-site adjudication trainings and the adjudication process um, was basically in the hands of a single individual um, covering all of the massive um, logistics regarding that. So there was a lot of success that year. Um, and then of course we wound up with the pandemic. So the ballot redesign project started in 2018, but um, during the pandemic, it picked up some steam and that was worked on and we'll have more information about that process, but that um, process uh, concluded basically in uh, 2021. Um, additionally, since January of 2020, there was a successful unaward show um, and <clears throat> as far as the board, um, the previous board of directors were coming to the end of their terms and there was a period of dormancy, which kind of makes sense because um, certainly the pandemic put a pause button on many things. Um, the outgoing board of directors changed the bylaws to allow for an interim board and the interim board um, was appointed and we are all um, will introduce ourselves and or I'll introduce them rather. And um, our purpose is to um, set up the continue with the adjudication process um, and get it, getting that started again and also to develop the more permanent board of directors. So let's have the next slide. And um, I have to go to my, uh, so um, just to review, um, I didn't, I'm just gonna escape here for a second. So just as a review, my name is Irene Cohen, 
and um, I've been an adjudicator for approximately two years with the NHTA and I served on the NHTA ballot redesign team. Um, the next person I want to introduce is Dan Pelletier and he is the artistic director of Q Zero Theatre Company and director of the drama of drama at the Arts Academy of New Hampshire and has also participated on the NHTA ballot redesign team and is our current um, interim vice president. Justin Vauchel, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, I never say your last name, has been involved in the NHTA since 2014 and most recently as the chairperson of the adjudication committee and a member of the board. <clears throat> Dan Gore is the business manager at Ovation Theatre Company, has a BA in theatre from the University of Notre Dame, and is a member of the NHTA Ballot Redesign Committee. And perhaps Tracy can say a little something about herself instead of me. Oh, well, sure. Um, I did, uh, most of you know me, uh, I have a BFA in theatre from Bernonia State in New York. Um, I have a theater company called Creative Ambitions Performance Studio and that launched during the pandemic. So nobody's really heard of it yet. Um, and uh, I have been involved with NHTA for the last uh, several years, both as a volunteer and as an adjudicator. Great. And so um, next on the agenda, we're going to have Dan Pelletier speak about um, building the new ballot. And thanks for your time. Thanks, Irene. Hi, everybody. Uh, Dan Pelletier, as said, uh, excited to be your interim vice president. Um, so if, uh, let's uh, go to the next slide, please. Um, so I know many of you have been involved with the NHTAs for a number of years, and the primary thing we uh, joined for is to, for the adjudication and the awards, and uh, as well as being part of the community. Um, and for a number of years, you know, we've had this... Um, uh, ballot process that uh, had a, a number of issues with it. Um, you know, it had a lot of subjectivity. Scores were wildly varied. If you're familiar with it, you know, it used to be you just watched the show, you picked a score out of one to 100, and then you had to justify it. So, um, you know, there was a really lack in standardization of the scores. Um, and uh, uh, so back, as we said, back in 2018, we actually had the first meeting. I actually think it was at the Hat Box, um, where we sat down and we started working on this project. Um, and we've, you know, over the last two years, or really uh, dove into it heavy and really trying to come up with something that was going to provide meaningful feedback for everybody, as well as uh, accurately uh, be able to help us recognize outstanding achievement in theater. Um, so there was an open call for volunteers. Um, we met, uh, I mean, there were some periods, yeah, where we were meeting every week via Zoom. Um, we, saw, we solicited uh a number of different things like we started with our own ballot and we really tried to break down what we valued uh and where uh what we thought we already did well we looked at similar organizations as well as other types of theater awards like educational things um as well as some more just straight educational uh things and we really were trying to develop a language-based rubric uh that would be something that could be uh something that anybody could operate because we know that there's a wide variety of types of people that are NHT adjudicators. You know, you have some people on one end that might have an MFA in theater from some prestigious university, as well as we have just those people that really love theater and we wanted to create a ballot that everyone could use, everyone could understand. So when, after consulting all of our experts from a number of levels, a uh, number of different uh, backgrounds uh, all throughout the process. And we really feel that we've created this very, um, at least uh, so far, uh, easy to use ballot that um, is very clear cut, that really gives you a strong idea of what you're looking for. 
Um, and it's, uh, you know, we had a public review in 2021. Uh, everyone will be able to take a look at it. Uh, it will be fully live tomorrow uh, on the website. So we created this language-based rubric that allows for as objective as possible of evaluation. Like, yes, you are still applying your subjectivity, but it's a subjective evaluation of more objective standards. Uh, we broke down each uh, award into clear cut uh, criteria with categories. Um, each criteria has somewhere between three to five levels. Um, and as you're doing it, you just simply read the different paragraphs and try to pick the ones that best described the show you took in. Um, so acting has like nine different subcategories, directing, pro overall production, everything has. And it helps create this uniformity. It removes a lot of the guesswork. It removes a lot of the subjectivity. Um, and it also, you know, and it removes that need to generate a score. You're just reporting on the experience. Um, and we've also made all additional comments optional uh, in hopes that we could maybe uh, push people towards giving comments that might just be, you know, helpful feedback or compliments and things like that. But at least when you look at the rubric, when you get it back, you'll know exactly why, you know, what you did and what people saw and how that all came out. So there's a much more uniformity. And it, uh, at least to us, it's very user friendly. We did have a great opportunity uh, last summer where we uh, both the ballot redesign committee, as well as some other members that weren't as, uh, of the community that weren't involved. We actually test drove our first draft of the ballot at, um, at a production that Ovation put on. Um, so we all sat down, we all took in the same show, we all used the ballot, and honestly, our first way through, we got it like 95% correct. Um, we really went back and made only some minor adjustments, so we really feel strongly that this has uh, created a great, easier-to-use system that's going to give much more meaningful feedback to the players, as well as help us truly identify uh, outstanding achievement in the theater. Um, you know, the, the middle levels of most things is, is still good theater. Like to us, we were really trying to say like, you know, the average theater production is still good theater. Um, and one of the other things that we discussed was, you know, the awards used to be best. Um, and we really felt that, you know, you couldn't really say it was best when you really only had four to six people's opinions. So we really were like, well, let's just focus on it being outstanding achievement in the theater, because that is really what we're trying to recognize here with the um, ballot. So um, I'm really hoping you guys are, uh, you know, excited to see the new ballot. As I said, it's, it's, um, there's a lot of it at first, and we are going to be working on a number of in-person training and training modules. Um, we're also hoping to create some video content so that like if you haven't been to training in a bit, you can review it and things like that to try to make it as user friendly um, as possible. I believe that's the end of my section. Do I have another slide? Ah, okay. Yes, there we go. So we'll be releasing everything. Uh, as we said, tomorrow it'll go online. Um, we're going to be, uh, you know, soliciting questions if anyone is confused on any of the language. So again, we can build a solid uh, FAQ as well as if, you know, if we get a consistent thing that like something is confusing, we can, you know, do some clarification and we'll be building, as we said, both the classic in-person training uh, program, as well as some videos and other assisting uh, documentation to really try to make uh, adjudication as simple and uh, enjoyable as possible for all of our adjudicators. Next slide, please. And I'll now be turning things over to Dan Gore, who will actually talk about uh, what it's going to take to get adjudication off the ground. Thank you very much, Dan. And um, yeah, this is uh, obviously what we all have been looking forward to and, and waiting for. And as much as we would all like to start adjudicating, um, you know, last uh, spring, um, we we've got to figure out and we've been trying to figure out, you know, what do, what would it take to actually get back up and running fully with adjudication? Um, and we want to make sure that we're very thoughtful and methodical about it and that we do it right. So as you can see, you know, our commitment, and, and this is from the board, uh, this interim board, but hopefully from all of us, um, it does require a significant effort um, from, of course, the participating companies, the adjudicators, um, putting on the miles and, and taking the time to, to do it. Um, and then NHTA volunteers, and we're going to talk a lot about volunteers and, and what we are hoping to create in our community here. Um, 
because what we do know, if you look at the second bullet here, is an under-resourced process, and we'll talk about resources in a moment too, um, is not ideal. Um, and uh, I think we would all agree that um, in this day and age, we should be able to have a fully digitized uh, process for for filling out a ballot and and for the whole process of identifying adjudicators and and so on and so forth. Um, but um, but it needs to have a, a variety of people involved too. Trying to re rely on a small group of people, or to the point where we had gotten where it was truly just one person managing this process, is just not sustainable. Um, and so, you know, really, um, we can only move forward if we if we have sufficient volunteers and resources. So we're going to take a look at what that is, and 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 uh, and um, what we're hoping people will sign up to to do to make that happen. And that's been a conversation we've had throughout the process of of, of redesigning the ballot too. So if we can go to the next slide here. Um, the volunteer requirements. So we have the interim board is um, is sort of a, a core from the interim board is, you know, is now the existing adjudication committee, but we would we want a few more people. So we're, we would like to get uh, about three more people to join the adjudication committee to just really oversee the process, the larger process. Um, and then the second bullet point in this left section, you see adjudication managers is a new concept that um, a number of people have discussed as we were redesigning the ballot. The idea that you would have sort of um, a, a cadre of people who would uh, take ownership of, you know, I'm going to work with, you know, one or two companies and you know be sort of their concierge um for their adjudication process make sure that um, they do in fact you know get adjudicators assigned to them and that's the idea of that is that that would actually be randomly generated by a, a digital system uh, but that those adjudicators are, are communicated to that they are confirmed that they get their tickets that they show up they turn their ballots in and and everything that's involved with that and so it's not just one person or even the adjudication committee facilitating that there's actually a, 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 an adjudication manager who um who would do that um and and so you know that's certainly um uh, ideally type a people who are very organized and uh, realize that um that doesn't always uh, define theater people but um some of us are um and um, but who's willing to, you know, to really help facilitate that process. Um, and then ultimately, if we're going to adjudicate shows, we want to we do want to have an awards ceremony and, and a celebration. Um, and so if we don't have people who are committed to putting that together, then, you know, that sort of we, we miss the final culmination of the effort. Um, and so we would need to have people step up and, and volunteer to actually produce the show. And it doesn't mean that they would do everything, um, but it means that they would be, you know, take the responsibility to make sure that it gets done. Um, so you're going to see a timeline here in a moment that kind of puts all these pieces in place. But then in addition to the human resources, we need some additional things too. So on the additional requirements there, you know, see, you see a you know fully functioning, professionally developed website, and um, that's something we had hoped to have in recent years, and, and it didn't quite happen. And and so um, we're going to talk about that in a moment too. But the you know the entire process would be digitally managed, um, and then of course we need sufficient participation from companies, right? Um, Got to have enough enough companies involved, enough shows to adjudicate in order to actually have a you know enough nominees for uh, awards and such um, and then of course as Dan pointed out training materials um, so not just uh, and when Dan said in-person training we're, we're historically in-person meant literally in person in these days and ages um, in person means what we're doing right now right virtually but live um, training um, but then also some some content that would be available for people to reference back. So for example, if you were trained in, you know, February, and then the first show you adjudicated is in November, you might want to be able to go back and refer um, to the training uh, materials and freshen yourself up before you actually go to do that. Um, so um, let's go to the next slide here. And you'll kind of see how this, um, the, the steps that we're looking for here, right? So the first thing is we got to identify volunteers. And tonight is our night to begin that call um to ask you all and people you know um to put 
people forward, to put yourself forward, to um, to volunteer. And so uh, one of the things is those adjudication committee members that we're looking for, just to, you know, three or so additional people to oversee the process. And then those adjudication managers that I was just talking about, you know, people stepping up and saying, I would be willing to, you know, be that host to that concierge person to uh, to manage for a company or a couple of companies, depending on how many shows they they might be submitting for adjudication. Um, and then we need people to step up and say, you know, hey, we, we will team up and um, make sure that we get an awards show uh, produced. And um, and then in parallel with that, you have this this at the bottom, you see that, you know, actually contracting uh, a vendor to build the adjudication system. We want to make sure that it gets done right. Um, and so uh, we, as the interim board, have taken responsibility to say, hey, we, we've got we, uh, sort of the list of requirements that would be needed for that and to put out, um, you know, requests for, uh, for proposals and, um, and so that we would then have that completed online adjudication system. And then once we have the human resources and the and that digital resource, then we start to move forward, right? So you see the additional the adjudication committee would actually develop the training materials, actually the presentations we would do, and then the static content that would that would go on beyond that. Um, and then we got to enroll companies, right? As Tracy said earlier, back in 2020, we had the highest number ever of participating companies. We hope we'll have that same number coming back, but we don't know that, right? We have to make sure that companies step up and, and say uh, um, that they will jump right back in and start submitting shows and then um, submitting adjudicators as well. Um, and then, of course, we've got to train the adjudicators. And so we would have a number of training sessions um, over a period of time. Um, and uh, and then ultimately, that would take us to the part where we're, you know, actually beginning to assign adjudicators. And I saw someone already uh, put a question in about timeline. And so um, I can try to attach some very rough time frames to this in a moment. Um, but if you can picture, if you can picture that first step, you know, that's sort of our first checkpoint in this map is is what you just saw pop on the screen do we have sufficient volunteer support because until we have that we can't really move to the next step right um and so um and and justin if you can hold for a moment there with advancing the slides uh, what i'll say is um you know if we begin tonight and people start raising their hands and by the way you, there'll be a google form in which you'll be able to do this so don't don't start putting it in the chat or emailing or whatever hey i'll do that i'll do this whatever there'll be a mechanism that we'll talk about at the end of this meeting for people to to raise their hand and throw their hat in their their name in the in in the hopper to do these various volunteer assignments but that happens as quickly as volunteers volunteer, right? So um, that could be done in a week or it could be done in 10 weeks, depending on how long it takes for us to get the, the volume of people to step up and volunteer. The actual production of the the, the system, um, realistically, probably to at least two to three months to make sure it gets done right, done correctly. Um, so that's the sufficient supporting resources, right? We have to have that done and the training, we had to be ready to train, right? And um, so that's kind of that second benchmark um, that you see there and then once we have the sufficient volunteers we have the sufficient resources we got to make sure we have enough companies right and and we don't like we're not asking that right now we're not asking companies to to sign up and start you know saying i'm gonna i'm gonna submit six shows for adjudication or whatever we're, we're far from that point um but when we get to that point we need to we need to have enough companies sign up um and uh, and so uh, I, I saw a question come in on the chat on my screen here about, you know, when will we expect to have the next awards um, ceremony? And, and the hope would be that it would be for the 20, an abbreviated 2023 season, um, abbreviated meaning whenever we can start education, which realistically wouldn't be until, you know, late spring, but we'd want to be able to capture, you know, the summer season, uh, as long as all these things come together, um, but that we would have enough shows to adjudicate enough theater to have happened, so that we could have uh, a celebration in at the beginning of 2024. Um, so that is the hope for that. Um, and I think that that brings me to the end of my section. So I will pass the baton over to Tracy Cosker. 
Great. Thanks so much, Dan. I appreciate it. Um, so I know that everyone is really here because you're interested in getting the adjudication process back up and running. And we all know that that's the best way to get the NHTA uh, community kind of engaged and involved again and moving forward. Um, but one of the other things that the intern board feels is really critical um, is that we set the NHT up for long-term success as a thriving nonprofit organization. Um, to us, the first step of that process is recruiting, identifying, and establishing a new long-term board. So next slide, what does that mean? Um, well, our bylaws state that we must have a minimum of five members in order to um, you know, comply with those. But we, as an interim board, are committed to building a diverse and equitable, uh, inclusive board of around seven to 10 leaders. Um, we anticipate the terms will begin sometime in 2023, um, but uh, we really want to be very intentional about this process. So we're committed to taking whatever time it needs uh, in order to identify the right people. Um, in the next month or so, we'll be finalizing really what the requirements will be, um, how we're going to do the evaluation, what the criteria will be. Um, and how you can um, bring forth nominations, et cetera. Our intent is to make that as publicly available as possible, to be very transparent with how that selection process will go. And we will be posting this information most likely on the website, um, as well as providing continuous updates to the community through various communication channels. Um, nominees that we're gonna be looking for, we know so far we are looking for a wide variety of varied backgrounds, education, experience, uh, because we really want it to represent the diversity of the various theater organizations that are here in New Hampshire. That means people who have experience in professional, maybe regional types of, commu of theater, community theaters, youth theaters. But it's also really important for us that we have identified people who also have skill sets in the business community or skill sets in fundraising or grant, um, uh, you know, grant research and, and grant submission, because in order for us to really go to the next level and, and add all the different things that we and are part of the long-term vision of the NHTA, it's important that we understand and we have the knowledge base and the foundation in both the operational, the business operations, the financial operations, as well as the artistic and creative operations that will be required. Um, it's really important that we are strategic in who is selected and that they are committed to and capable of really taking things to the next level. Um, the interim board will be making the final selections, but as I said, um, we will be very transparent in how that selection process goes and intend to update the community every step of the way. So once we've identified the new board, we're going to start establishing what we're calling our core communities. So we have committees that like the ballot committee and the uh, three or four people who will be on the production committee for the award ceremony. But there's a lot of other things that need to happen in order for us to be a long-term organization. Uh, things like fundraising and uh, grants writing, as well as marketing and communications are going to be really important for us to kind of expand our outreach, expand our reach, and to kind of see through to the long-term vision of the organization. Um, we anticipate probably in six to eight months starting to um, understand and put some frameworks around what those core communities will be. But the idea is that these are a selection of different people from the community who have interests in these areas or talents in these areas and are willing to work together um, toward a common goal of developing these communities and expanding them as the new board takes root. Um, it's also going to be an ever evolving type of process. Um, there's a lot of new ideas, previous boards, other individuals, all of you and participating um, theater organizations have a lot of different ideas and things that we'd like to see happen from education opportunities as well as shared resources. Um, and those are all things that we are excited to continue to look into, but we want to make sure that we are prioritizing the most the most important things first so that we can get to where we want to be to go forward. And that's it for me. I think Justin, you're up next.
Okay, we're gonna see if I can advance my own slides while I talk. Um, okay. Okay, so um, I just wanna say sort of in recap, um, the, the goal of this effort this whole sort of interim board effort is to recognize that um, there's a theater community in New Hampshire that really valued the NHTA. And we, those of us who had been publicly involved previously heard a lot from folks while we were sort of on hiatus about, you know, what's happening, where are you, when, when are things gonna be like they used to be? And um, I think, you know, recognizing that um, one of the reasons that, uh, we were on hiatus is that um, sort of wasn't a sustainable organization in terms of just the amount of people who were making things happen. Um, and really, it deserves to be, you know, something that is is of the community and not just for the community. So um, the interim board exists basically to restart adjudication if possible and hand the NHTA to um, to the appropriate future stewards in, in sort of good working order. That's, that's really our goal. Um, so what, one of the things that we wanna be really proactive about is being specific with dates and commitments and, 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 and what we're gonna do when. And so in that spirit, um, what can you expect from us? Um, so tomorrow morning on our website, um, we're gonna have um, our notes about this meeting. Um, we're gonna have a link to this meeting um, recording uh, on our YouTube channel. Um, we're going to open up public access again. It was open last year to um, to the ballot materials, the, the actual rubric, um, and that'll be at this URL, and that URL will be on our website. Um, and we'll have a link open to our sort of volunteer interest form. So there are some very specific things we're looking for you know, so that we can get rolling. We're looking for some folks who can commit to a year of being on the adjudication committee, um, some folks who can commit to a year of being an adjudication manager. And really what that would involve is, you know, we would assign you to a couple theater companies and you would help oversee their adjudication process for the year. Um, so we can sort of spread that effort out um, um, amongst a lot of people. Um, so that's what we're going to do tomorrow. Um, over the coming months, we want to be really clear about our progress towards the milestones that we have that we've put up on the screen. So, you know, um, hey, we, we're still looking for eight people. Oh, you know, now we have a committee. Now we have all the people that we're looking for. Um, um, just so everyone knows, you know, we've contracted with Vendor X. You know, there will be a, a version of the adjudication website to test drive in April or whatever. Um, you know, hey, we have training materials. Um, we're going to open up the application process for companies. Every step of the way, we're going to communicate how far we are um, and, and what it would take to accelerate if people want to. Um, I think in the past, um, I've certainly been guilty of this, sort of said, hey, you know, it'd be great if we did this, so we're going to try to do it. Maybe, maybe it'll be next week, maybe it'll be next month. And so it's hard to really know where things were. And so we just wanna be really clear about what it would actually take to uh, get things rolling each step of the way. Um, and moving forward, you know, our, our real, the real idea here is that um, um, if we can get enough people involved, um, um, things should run really smoothly for the participating companies. And getting enough people involved means really being committed to communicating with the community um, soliciting feedback and, and being transparent about decisions and things. So that's, that's the goal here um, um, and in terms of what's next. Um, and the final slide, final slide, guys. Um, what can you do to help? What can you do today? Um, so uh, you could uh, fill out the volunteer interest form in the morning um, if, if you're actually interested in one of the roles we described. Um, but maybe even more helpfully, um, you can start to think about other people who are in your organization or in your part of the theater community who might be good candidates for our volunteer positions. Um, I suspect that most of the folks that we end up working with might not even be on this initial call. Um, um, so it would be really helpful if you if you share what you've learned tonight with the people you know who you're in contact with. Um, 
and we'll make it really easy to share because it'll all be right on our website. Um, we've established a sort of a collaborative inbox um, that we're trying to funnel all communications to. Um, um, so if you contact us at newnhta at nhtheateralliance.org, um, you can give us a heads up that you know your company is interested in participating. You know, the sooner that we understand, um, you know how much interest there is, that, that that's going to help us make some decisions. Um, and then any questions or ideas that you have, you know, um, I think um, I think when things actually get rolling, there'll be all sorts of things happening that were ideas that that, that didn't come from from the from the answer report. So. Um, we're going to really try to solicit um, ideas from folks. Um, our goal is to have another open meeting like this in January, um, hopefully for an even larger audience. And um, we're trying to, to come up with some scheduling for that. So if you have opinions about scheduling that, um, um, you can write us at new NHTA at, at NHTA Alliance that work also. Um, so that's what we wanted to get out into public tonight is, um, is sort of, hey, uh, there's a group of people who are trying to keep the NHTA alive, but we need a lot of help and we have a plan. That's really uh, the initial communication. Um, and so uh, I'm gonna try to just open things up for conversation here and maybe lead a moderated uh, Q&A and we will see how it goes. Um, I'm gonna check the time here just... Uh, So it looks like we're like we're doing pretty well. So you know we've our plan was to sort of run till eight thirty. That would leave forty five minutes for for discussion. Um, um, I think we can probably do that. So um, I think the best way to do this on Zoom is if folks raise their hands um, with the hand raise feature. Does everyone know how to do that? Uh, or you can just raise your own hand, um, and I'm just gonna unmute people um, as I see them, and we'll and we'll and we'll talk. And I think um, once you know, if, if, if we're talking about a certain question that someone's asked and someone else has input, I think, you know, let's try, feel free to jump in. And if it gets too crazy, then we'll, we'll put some more rules on it. But Justin, you do already have a good number of questions in the chat. If you want to. Yeah. If we okay. could, we could start with them as they go in order. Are you okay with that? Yeah, sure. All right. Um, so okay. I cannot share the screen. Are we recording? Okay. Um, when can organizations expect to receive adjudicator comments from 2019? Um, uh, write us directly um, and, and uh, we will try to get you something if you're missing something. Um, I am gonna say that the 2020 season, um, <coughs> we've decided to treat as a loss. Um, so those shows that were adjudicated, um, you know, we're not gonna be trying to merge the points from those ballots into the new system. Um, so by the time of the awards show, that would have been almost three years ago. Um, um, so, um, you know, the pandemic had a lot of victims and one of them was that was that season of the NHTA. Um, but if there's uh, comments from before then, that's all uh, should be in the database. And so should be possible to pull that off for you. So Andrew, I would say that was your question. Um, just, just uh, write us at that collaborative inbox and, and all of these uh, great people are going to make sure that we get, that it gets handled. Um, um, there's a question, when do you plan to have the first award show? You know, if, so here's the thing, you know, we have a certain collection of companies that really are focused on summer work and their participation isn't going to make a lot of sense for them if they can't get their summer season adjudicated. Um, so I think for, for the NHTA, um, you know, if we can do all the things we said, um, you know, by the end of May, and we really are rolling, then you know it makes sense to 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 plan and produce an award show um, at the end of the year. Um, at the end of the year for us is is January of the next year, right? Um, so we'd love to do an award show in January 2024, but it's going to require you know a lot of execution on the part of the NHTA and a lot of a lot of volunteer you know work from from the community so that's the ideal goal um, but we're going to be really clear about you know about when we can take each step to, to try to get there so um, um, 
I'll assume the new ballot will be electronic. Yeah. So we're, we have a, a, a real detailed requirements document and we're basically going to pay um, um, probably a substantial amount of money out of what's left of our budget to get a professionally built site. Um, and we won't be launching until we have, until we have that uh, up and running. Um, what are the metrics and numbers that will trigger a commitment to relaunch? Um, uh, was Andrew's question. So, so those are the numbers that were presented by Dan. Um, um, we need an adjudication committee that at least has six people committed to working the whole year. Um, if I use the ballpark estimate of the you know 30 some companies that have participated in previous years, we want to have enough adjudication managers that each manager can have two, three companies maybe that they help during the year. So that feels like we need 10 or 12 people committed to doing that role all year, right? And you know there'll be folks who try it and it doesn't work for them. So I think we might even need a few more than that. Um, but that's that is the rough goal. This is a 2024 awards show. Um, um, and then, uh, will you consider the comments? Um, no, we're going to treat 2020 like a lost cause. And one of the reasons is that it was being um, handled manually and the labor that's involved in pulling those manual things together is just not labor that we want to spend. So, um, you know, uh, Dan has raised his hand, so go ahead, Dan. Yeah, hey, uh, Justin, I just wanted to honor Ginny's uh, request that we could stop sharing the screen so we can see more more faces. I oh, I'm sorry. I'm do sorry. That at this point. You mean the giant word discussion on a PowerPoint background is, <laughs> isn't, isn't interesting to everybody? Okay. There like it. There's everybody. Um, and Justin, I wanted to build off. I know we when we people were asking about the uh, electronic version of the ballot um i believe we had discussed that you know we want it to be built right into the adjudication website um ideally something that's mobile friendly so if, if you wanted to fill out your ballot like in the parking lot after the show it, it could be something that could be done uh fairly easily as well as something you can do uh desktop as we said it's it's ultimately going to be um you know you're pushing you're just reading button reading paragraph choosing, choosing a paragraph choosing yeah and you're choosing which paragraph best describes the show you watched under a number of criteria um and it should be as we said uh shooting for as user friendly uh and straightforward as possible with language that anyone with a a basic understanding of theater should be able to use and feel comfortable um you know describing what they saw you know, a big hurdle that we had in, in that design effort is um, there's a lot of different kinds of theater companies that participate in the NHTA and they all take the stage with different intent. Um, and so when, when you start to group companies together and you want to, you know, sort of grade things so that you can give a give an award, um, it's, it's difficult to, to, to come up with criteria to compare each company's work together. Right. And that was, that was, I think, why the previous ballot just said, hey, pick a number from zero to 100, right? But that felt like a little bit of a cop-out to us. And so what we've really tried to do is come up with a system where, um, you know, shows that have different kinds of strengths or actors that have different kinds of strengths or, or, or technical artists that have different kinds of strengths can, can, can all sort of have a shot at competing against each other in, in a fair way. Um, so there's a lot of criteria. There are a lot of things that could be rated highly, other things that might not be rated highly about a particular um, nomination. And I think it, it's going to be pretty interesting for folks. Um, 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 I'm, I'm going to answer this last question here, and then we'll just go to a pure hand raising mode. Is that is that good, Irene? Um, there's a there's a question that you missed. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Maybe maybe um, some of the other. Um, board members um, would have additional comments. We could um, just add those if, if it feels relevant. Um, Ginny asked, what is the long-term vision beyond the awards? And then that catches us up to recently. <laughs> Let me give a, I'll give a brief answer and then I'm gonna uh, ask other folks to, to, to chime in there. So, um, and the only reason I want to say is, is, is I'm this remaining surviving member of the previous board, right? And what we had really tried to start doing is um, try to build audience for, for participating companies. So um, 
um, advertise using our promotional vehicles, like our large Facebook presence, um, the other work that companies are doing, um, um, and try to take advantage of the fact that we were sort of in the middle of things because of adjudication to, to sort of be a place where people could go to learn about everything that's happening. Um, and so, and so um, we had started to try to really formalize that process, you know, send us information about shows, you know, even if they're not nominated, right? If you're a participating company and, you know, had talked about maybe we can build a calendar on the website and things like that. But, you know, opportunities for cross promotion were, was sort of the initial thing. I think ultimately there were, you know, a lot of ideas, but um, I think really strengthening the theater community in New Hampshire is really the, the, the strategic goal. Yeah, I think we discussed a lot of things. Um like uh i know at one point someone wanted to, we were talking about just different sort of educational resources where maybe there could be like workshop series on different things um idea sharing uh you know round table discussion type things coffee nights however you want to have them um and maybe even resource sharing you know that's one of the things that i love about the area that i hear from a lot of people that have been in other theater communities about how great um, New Hampshire, the theater communities are about like lending set pieces and props and taking care of each other that they don't see in other parts of the country where everybody else is like, no, this is my flat. You can't have my flat. Um, and, and we don't have that here. So if we can set up some more, uh, you know, resources for things like that, that can help, um, you know, strengthen all of us. Cause I don't think, you know, as much as we all compete for the awards, I don't think we compete for, um, you know, trying to hurt each other or not, um, you know, what we want every theater production in New Hampshire to be a quality theater production that only serves to benefit all of us. So um, any resources we can help create to uh, strengthen each other um, is definitely a huge part of the long term vision of the Alliance. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll say that, you know, it was unfortunate that our organization was so under resourced when COVID hit, because I think a strong NHTA could have been a really helpful presence during that. Um, and instead, you know, the three of us who were doing it at that point just had to put things on pause, right? So, um, you know, I think everyone sort of realizes when they are at the awards show and there's 800 other people and you know almost all of them um, from the NHTA that, that there is a really strong, successful community building aspect to, to what's happening. And so, you know, whatever we can do to strengthen that and take advantage of it. And I just wanted to add um, one more thing that as far as the long term vision, certainly um, as um, the new permanent board takes their positions and the energy, renewed energy with um, the theater community in, in New Hampshire is likely to continue to shape those things. So there, it's not a done deal. Are we good for the next questions? We've got hands raised. Well, actually, I, I raised my hand only because it gives us a nice segue to Lindsay's question. Um, I mean, as you hear, um, you know, it kind of the, the sky's the limit, right? It's like, what does the community want from the NHTA? And, and there were some things that were starting to happen right before the pandemic. Um, and, and it was some of the stuff we talked about, sharing educational resources, having some of these things. And so if people are interested in that and they step up, great. And then, you know, Lindsay asks, would there be enough work or structure to, you know, the benefit from a college intern? Not right now, but yeah, wouldn't that be great if... Mm -hmm. And and maybe maybe in short term there would be, but we, we need the we need the you know probably that adjudication committee might be the ones that would sort of say hey this could be a way to to help with that process. I'm not an expert in that, but others are. There's people like Tracy in this meeting who are in education anyway, um, and so wouldn't that be great if we had multiple opportunities for interns? So yeah, it'd be great if if we got a new board early because it'd be great. If they could start to engage that stuff early, mm -hmm. oh. sooner the better. Hi. Nothing else in the chat. Do we have anyone raising their hand with questions? Yeah. <laughs> ballot questions, organizational questions. As we said, the ballot will go live uh, tomorrow. I'm actually looking at it right now. Just refresh my memory. Now, a lot of people in this meeting right now have already seen it in various forms or fashions um, as it was put together. Go, we got a question. 
Katie with uh, Queen City Improv. Yes, and I apologize. It's I. Um, it's probably just more two comments. Um, but I haven't found a time prior to really say this, aside from occasionally to individuals over the past few years. Um, I think it would be great if um, NHAs could consider kind of as you're looking for more volunteers, maybe promoting this in a way that it's clear for uh, individuals without a flagship organization, how you are willing for them to participate. Because I'll use um, Hatbox and Andrew as an example. I'm there every month, but for me to put Hatbox on my thing as I come in is awkward. And also Queen City Improv doesn't currently have a way to participate. So I, I didn't know what to put on here. So even coming in, um, I work with a lot of different organizations in the state, but maybe just considering making sure there are ways for people so there it's not just your flagship organization because there are hundreds and I, there's also a lot of crossover, but a lot of people that might participate, but that sometimes feels a little bit limiting. Yeah, um, I, I yeah, I think that's a great point, Katie. That's definitely something that I even mentioned it previously with in our board that I, you know, we have a theater company technically, but it never really launched. We had to get rid of the space, all that kind of fun stuff. And I do stuff all over the place, right? So I'm I'm involved in multi different places. So I think that we could make that much clearer for people. And that's the whole that is also one of the visions of those core communities to get more people wanting to be involved as things extend and, and as we grow. So I think that's a great point. Yeah, the other thing I was going to quickly say was also just, um, and I know this is probably not something that's gonna happen in this iteration, but more opportunities for organizations that, that don't produce uh, content that would be something that would be adju adjudicated. Um, because I, I know I, I don't have a ton of methods aside from specifically seeking out adjudicated content um, besides just participating in the performance ensemble every year, which is fine if that's my involvement, but if there are other ways for other avenues of performance in the state to be acknowledged, I think that would kind of help kind of what Justin had said about um, including more organizations and also probably you would capture more individuals that way. Mm -hmm. Sorry, those weren't questions. No, no, great, they were good, great points oh. to make and I think there with some of like the the adjudication manager position doesn't have to be somebody involved with a specific company which would be great and as we start to put together these different committees that are resource sharing or workshops or things they can definitely get uh involved that way you can be on those various committees and not have to be tied to a theater company um as well as um, you know, when we add that promotional arm, who says you have to be, a, you know, Queen City Improv is is a theater company, whether they're entering the award or they can't enter the awards because we say they have to be like written pieces, but the theater alliance would be more than happy to be promoting your work and trying to do everything we can to help you guys, um, you know, be successful. And we had started a pretty significant effort to do some filmmaking about different things that were going on that weren't traditionally adjudicated stuff. And uh, all that stuff is still up on our YouTube channel. So it was a really interesting short piece about um, some of the stuff that was happening in Portsmouth. Um, and we were hoping to do more work like that. Um, but, but And if you think about it too, the Unawards show actually did feature um, non-participating companies that actually sent some content in and, and that was pretty refreshing. Um, to see some different things. So so Katie, you're you're spot on. And and just to not to completely be redundant with, <laughs> with what's I even said, but the idea of people not affiliated with theater companies being volunteers is actually ideal, really. Um, because there's no see <laughs> bias or whatever, right? And and so as for adjudication committee members, for adjudication managers, for adjudicators, like if there are, you know theater professors in in new hampshire that want to be adjudicators 
just because they know theater i mean they might be a little you know esoteric in the way they do it but whatever like it it's yes there's this requirement that if and for anyone who's new if you're a participating company and you put a show forward every show you you adjudicate you have to adjudicate six others right like that's just kind of the, the way we we do the math so you can get six people to adjudicate your show you got to go adjudicate six other ones but i think many of us know that a lot of those adjudicators that were put forward by that company weren't were you know friends or or, or or associates of the company but not you know stakeholders in the company um but we have historically had just independent adjudicators not affiliated with any company um and those are great so um so Andrew, I, you I, had a, I think had a comment on what katie was saying too uh yeah Andrew had his hand up for a bit yeah uh no i again katie thanks for bringing up uh, the approach. Hatbox was in a unique situation because we produce a venue and we very rarely produce shows that we would necessarily uh, have adjudicated. So we have, uh, we, it took several years to get it to happen, but the uh, New Hampshire Theater Alliance did eventually uh, recognize the ability of us to kind of, because we're co-producing with the organizations that work in this space. So we were able to provide adjudicators to um, meet the needs of those groups that perhaps were too small or didn't have the capabilities to uh, meet the requirements. And that was one of the things that we haven't really discussed. We talked a lot about the ballot redesign, but we haven't really talked a lot about the adjudicator development and the requirements of the organizations coming in and whether or not those expectations are going to be maintained from the previous year. The ballots changed a lot, but you know, yeah, I, I find I, ways to bring the organizations in. I'd love to address that directly. And then I want to get to Jenny's question also. Um, but so, you know, we had to decide what we were going to bite off initially with this adjudication redesign effort, because we knew that it was going to be a big, uh, a big piece of work. And so we set the boundary of only the ballot. Uh, but we know there are a lot of open questions around, around how the NHCA structures and does awards that aren't ballot questions, right? And there's this question of, of smaller organizations. There's this question that's very appropriate for something like Queen City of what is what is an adjudicable production. Um, there's there are questions around categories that like um, like projection design and, and other technical categories that um, are are more prevalent sometimes now and different than say lighting. Um, there are questions around things like gendered acting awards and, and should we toss that idea out or what do we do there so there's a lot of open questions that are legitimate questions that um the group of people who are resigning the ballot i think aren't even the right people to answer some of those questions these need to be community discussions um and sort of everyone understanding what would be the impact on the award show if there were 40 more awards or what would be the impact on the education process if there were companies that couldn't also, um, you know, adjudicate six shows, right? How can we, how could we manage those kinds of things, right? And, you know, we'll have the NHCA that we all design, right? So we'll all be sort of responsible for whatever we come up with. Um, um, to, to, to Jenny's question about sort of uh, our interaction with other organizations, um, with the professional, um, um, with the New Hampshire Professional Theater Association. Um, until two years ago, we always had someone from that group on our board. Um, um, we have a smaller number of professional theaters that have been long-term members, and we always wanted to grow that. Um, and so we wanted to be sort of interactive with that group. And um, that would be something that would be sort of part of our criteria uh, as we build a new board. Um, um, the other sort of organizations like the, uh, like Michael Curtis affiliated things and the and the community theater association um i think in some ways you know they if i look at their facebook presence they do a lot of the same things that we're talking about right and and certainly the intent wouldn't be to co-opt any of that stuff um but you know i think they also have different um, um a different focus um and so i think you know if our focus was on um um, being a really well-organized sort of high produced spigot for information about everything going on across the state and, and what we could do to, to, to document it and attract and build audience. Um, 
you know, that, that would be different than, than what those groups do, I think. Um, so that's what we were sort of moving to with our film work and with some other things. And, you know, I think all that conversation will be awesome for, you know, for the next board to, to really engage in. Um, um, and, you know, the reason that we've been so aggressive about putting interim in front of our name is one, I had to make the interim promise to the people involved so they would be involved, right? Um, short term, you know, let's just get things rolling. But really, um, we, we don't wanna presume to, to, to sort of make a lot of answers for, for that group of people that are willing to actually commit to spending years stewarding the organization. And, um, you know, historically the NHTA board, because we've been sort of under-resourced with people has been a, a very get your hands dirty. You know, if you're on the board, you're gonna produce the show and you're gonna run adjudication and you're gonna do all these things. And we really would like to, to, to change that and get a really strategically assembled group of people who can really provide advice, provide access, provide, you know, that kind of stuff to, you know, help point the organization in a, in a way that it could grow and be a lot stronger. So, um, so I think, you know, to be determined. Um, and in that structure, the, the worker bees would be the volunteers. Yeah, it would be, be us, it would be us basically. <laughs> the rest of us. <laughs> um, um, are there um, uh, more, just raise your hand or jump in um, if there's something else here that we wanna cover because we do have time and it's a good group of people here. Chat, no one, no one. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna, you know, we do have a great group of people here. So I would I, I would love to just know and hear um, if there was one thing that you as a, either a participating member, production company person who has, just been involved with NHTA. If there is one thing that you that would make you say, "Great, we are definitely moving forward. I feel excited. I feel ready, and I I, I can be committed to what's going to be coming and to being engaged with the organization again." What would that be? It's a loaded question. I know, but it's important, I feel, for us to know. And I, uh, Andrew's raising his hand. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm going to be the one that steps into the pool here, I guess. Um, there is no one thing, but I would like to see a cohesive, unified vision for the organization. It's very hard for us to step forward where we're all so very busy uh, trying, still trying to survive. I mean, frankly, the 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 ticket revenue from sales is still way down. The dealing, the addressing of having to cancel performances or even entire runs due to the pandemic. Um, working with other organizations to to have consistent messaging in the public and advocate for funding for organizations to help get us through this situation. Those are all things that are really important. And I struggle to find extra time to be able to uh, commit to things like this when I don't exactly know what the goal is. While I, I appreciate that there's an outline of here's a number of people that we want in these positions. And and I hear we're interim board members because we really want the next board to take over. I also kind of hear like, we want to pick the board members that will take over and do the things we've already set up in the way that we want to do. And so it's very hard for me to say, yes, I'm going to dive into that pool and do a lot of work with you. If, if you're kind of waiting for something to happen and you don't really have a unified vision of what you want to be going forward and how you relate to all the other organizations. I, the last thing I wanna see is this organization uh, bite off uh, a bigger bite than they can chew uh, and try to do a lot of extra stuff, promoting people who aren't really involved with the organization um, before they get their organization up and running and, and making it work. I mean, I'm really grateful for all the time that, that folks have spent. I was uh, on this. I have been involved in the ballot part in the pro uh, past. I had to pull out because frankly, just too many things going on, but I'm <laughs> deeply grateful that that process moved forward. But I was hoping that tonight's meeting would have 
here are some big things that we're committing to, like we have a date. And if, and, and I heard that kind of, we have a rough we date. Don't, we don't have a date. Days. We don't have a date because we don't have the people to run adjudication. Right? I, I understand so, that. And so again, we, I'm, uh, Justin, you know, I can think, I just finish? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you know what? Never mind. Well, Andrew, I, I appreciate Jay, your your comments and, and if I can respond to a couple of them. So the idea of being busy and that we're not that we're all still recovering is is so valid, right? And and the irony is that the the whole um, ballot redesign project was done in earnest during twenty and twenty one. And Andrew, you were a part of it and, and early on, and then and then you got a new role and got super busy too, right? Um, uh, even during the pandemic. And the irony is that we had so much momentum. And as Dan Pelletier said earlier, we, you know, we beta tested the ballot in the summer of 2021, um, thinking that maybe we could get going again, right? Um, but what happened was then theater started going again, and we all got busy. And, it's, and so it's, you know, when, when you have people who are volunteers, and then, oh, by the way, are, you know, finally starting to uh, to get busy again, um, that's very real. And that's one of the reasons why we want to sort of, you know, get a band of people each doing a little bit as opposed to a handful of one or a, a two or three people doing everything, um, because we feel like that that would actually make it happen. And and so we're not we don't want to commit to we're going to start adjudication on this date because we re we're recognizing that we can't commit to that until we we have the people and it's it is kind of a chicken and egg kind of thing um but to your larger point of vision versus you know what are we all signing on for right now is what we're committed to as an interim board is to make is to get adjudication restarted because as much as we've talked about a larger vision for NHTA and there is more to it adjudication is the is the, is the thing that ties us all together it is kind of the meat of of the thing right and until we get that up and running the long term vision the the additional things beyond it are are more aspirational um and so if it makes if that makes a little sense that you know that we're committed to that to get adjudication restarted by building this volunteer base, by building the digital platform, um, and then in, and then simultaneously trying to identify this new board, because really the board, as it was discussed earlier, um, you know, you wouldn't want to have principles of companies on the board of directors necessarily. That's you know, and and certainly as adjudication managers, principles of companies shouldn't be seeing the the behind the scenes aspects of ballots and stuff like that. And we're not going to do that. Um, but right now we kind of have a mishmash, right, of people who just hung around and volunteered um, during the the hiatus. And so that's who we are. Um, but ultimately, we want to move into the next thing. So if 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 all we do if all we say tonight is we're committed to re to, to restarting the adjudication process, and here's the steps that, that it's going to take to get there, then that that was our original goal. And if if I could just also add, um, the idea of just you know thinking of things as far as phases. So the first phase is really being able to you know um, rebuild and the process as well as the literal ballot and the um, electronic version of the ballot. But the idea of having an interim board um, develop a long range plan or vision that is then taken over by, you know, a more permanent board didn't seem to set right with this group of interim board members. And um, hopefully that just continues to evolve as, you know, the new board is formed and also begins to, you know, really take more feedback from the theater community. Um, hopefully it feels like, a, you know, we've been commenting a lot about the new NHTA. I mean, hopefully this just feels like it's got some, some new life and some new direction. And I'm very grateful for the fact uh, that there is a, um, a, a, a desire to validate that the organization becomes, you know, what the people who are willing to step up and make it happen desire that they're not, it's not a legacy thing where this is the way we always have done it. Um, my, my main point 
in raising the notion of starting adjudication was tying that to a date. And I know that if you are able to, once you get a number of people who commit to it and say they commit to it in July, and then you launch, are you trying to uh, have an awards program in January that will only recognize four months? Or it's yeah. that aspect that I haven't quite gotten out of this discussion yet, because, you know, again, when the way it has happened in the past, and I'm not saying it has to move forward this way, but it seems like we have done a calendar year from January 1st through really October, because the November and December stuff doesn't really ever get adjudicated uh, or recognized at the award ceremony. And if there's a willingness, uh, because there's a, a, a very rational reason for having to do that because you have to tally the results and produce an award show and things of that nature. So it's an unfortunate oubliette of the process. But if one was able to take a look at it calendar wise and say, we're going to do the first set of adjudications for 18 months, or whatever to come up to the first set of celebrations, so you have a first year. I just haven't heard what and at what framework is being used to tie when you start adjudications to when your first ceremony occurs. Um, so, so I think I was trying to hint at that. So it's it's helpful to make it explicit. Um, um, if if we had all the pieces ready that you know that we've outlined and said, hey, we really believe that we can do this successfully and we can start with, with productions that, that are in June, right? That's an important date for us as an organization because most of our professional members are, are involved in a way that it's summer, summer productions, right? Um, and I, I, if, if, if I was on the next board, and I don't know that I, that I would be, um, I would argue that it would be in the strong interest of the organization to have an event that next winter. Um, um, the, the, the community aspect of it is important. Um, the financial results for the organization are important. It's our only fundraising event right now. It's ticket sales are, are the entire budget of the NHTA, basically. Um, um, there's a lot of different reasons why. Um, but um, just, you know, also just getting back in, 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 in the habit, right? So I think that would be an abbreviated year. Um, um, however, you know, if we're not ready to go then, then we have a serious question about what to do with 2023, right? Because um, I can't fairly ask a company like New London to send adjudicators for productions that start in September when they won't be involved, you know, again, producing things until the next year, right? Um, and so, you know, there would be a lot of questions then about would it make sense to collapse things into a 18 month thing or, you know, what makes sense, right? Um, and, you know, the math always around this is that you need enough people contributing adjudicators that, right, that you get a reasonable measurement. And, um, you know, if, if we look at a fall start, but really there are only six companies interested in doing a fall start because they're the ones doing shows then, then that gets to be a problem too. So, you know, there's a lot of, of design constraints here. Um, and so, you know, that's why we've tried to outline a process where we think if everything went great, um, we could hit, you know, a, a late, late, late spring start. But, you know, when you do the math, um, you need to give enough notice to people that they're gonna adjudicate a show. You need to give them six weeks or eight weeks, right? And so, Everything has to be ready six or eight weeks before you want to start adjudication. And so, and so you need to have done training. You need to have um, your online things working. You need to have all your volunteers ready. And so that's a pretty short timeline, right? Um, you know, we get into the holidays. We're talking middle of January to, you know, April to do a lot of execution if we were going to have that, that summer start. So um, we just want to be really open about what it would take to start and, and you know, I'd love, I'd love it if, if this group could hit that mark, but and we don't want to commit, commit to things that we don't have resources for yet either. So, yeah. And I think that it is, I think it would be fair to say that our goal certainly could be to start back up in June, but there's the contingencies, right? I mean, we're going to really plan for, we want to get started as soon as possible, as long as we have the right things in place. We don't want to make a mistake of, pushing things forward before it's ready and then just 
you know, going either, you know, making mistakes or not thinking things through, et cetera. So yeah. I really we don't want to fail that. this time, right? right? And so <laughs> we don't want companies to give their precious time <laughs> and then we get two months down the road and we, and, and things fall apart. And mm -hmm. so we really want to be clear about what we think it would take to succeed and, and make sure everyone knows if we've hit that mark yet before we get started. Because I think one of the things that's going to be difficult is getting companies to participate again. Um, and we need to be able to say to them, here's how I can guarantee that it will run smoothly, right? There are 15 people involved in this, right? Um, and here's who they are, and they're, and they're publicly committed to, to helping. So that's, that's sort of how we're thinking about it. But, um, yeah, that was what, one thing we definitely discussed before the meeting was we didn't know what the turnout was going to be for something like this. Like, if we said, oh, we want to have adjudication start, you know, let's say it never would have happened, but January 1st, and then we didn't get the people and everyone was like, eh, not really interested. Well, then we look like silly because we put out a date that was impossible. So that's why we focused more on the organizational milestones and building that foundation. And only when we hit that foundation, can we put out dates um, that it was just more important to us to have um to know that we're going to get it right and do it well in that first year probably won't please everybody there'll be some um you know it will kind of probably be almost a, a pilot year or something because we probably will be start if we do start in 2023 we're def you know going to miss at least january february march um but being able to make sure that when we are doing it we are doing it well <laughs> and it's built with sustainability so that once we get out of that first couple of months that we have a uh, process that works and something that eventually becomes a well-oiled machine. And the other thing that I will just add, and I think we're coming to our wrap up point here, but we wanna make sure there, if there's any other questions is, you know, some of this takes a while, right? Like building the digital platform is going to take a while. However, once we have it, then stuff happens more quickly because it spits out, you know, adjudicators and, and the communication process and, and everything. Training used to take quite a while because venues and, you know, people had to host it and, and uh, you know, an intrepid band of one or two people last time um, had to go around the state doing these, these trainings. Well, with digital platforms, you know, like Zoom right now, once we're ready to go with training, we can just schedule, you know, a couple nights a week for three weeks or whatever and like train everybody boom you're done right so while there's certain things that are going to take a little while for us to, to you know, we need the volunteers and, and so on and so forth there's other things that you know let's take advantage of this stupid technology we've been dealing with for the last few years and and you know turn up uh, you know i'm a silver lining kind of guy so that's <laughs> that's how i choose to view it um so you know it will there'll be it'll be a slow pace and then a quick pace and a slow pace and a quick pace but Otherwise, I'll just be redundant with everything everyone else has said. We want to start as soon as we can and, and have a viable truncated season. So, so we think that the kind of people who you've seen their names on lists of things, sort of theater heroes at, at previous award shows, right? People who are, are volunteers on the periphery um, who aren't caught up in show dates necessarily um, and production. We think folks like that, um, if you know of them in your orbit, uh, would be great individuals to help us manage adjudication, to just help us keep, make sure that, you know, when people cancel, when people need to swap out, that we get six people to shows that, that can communicate directly with just a few companies. So there's always a single touch point. So if you have individuals like that, who you think weren't in this meeting, but might be good to recommend, um, um, you know, the sooner we can hit our number goals, the sooner we can get a, a merry band of individuals together and, and really start rolling on this thing. So, and part of that vision too is that the lift for that person would be very defined, right? Like, hey, you're assigned to Weathervane. Like, that's all you do is whatever they submit for adjudication. You take the numbers, the names that get spit out by the computer, and you communicate with them, and you communicate with you know with Weathervane and, and make sure that they they get connected, right? And then you develop a relationship with Weathervane throughout the year because you're their their manager, right? And so 
as each show comes, yeah, there's, you know, some, some busy work that's happening. It's all, you're sitting at your desk doing it, right? You're just sending emails or, you're, or sitting in your chair or whatever. It's, so it's, um, you're not like there at the night of the show welcoming adjudicators. That'd be ridiculous. Um, so that's the idea that, you know, each manager would have his or her own individual lift um, and would be able to establish, hopefully over the, over the course of a year, a relationship with that, that company too, to say, hey, I'm, I'm your point person. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. We are coming up on 8.30. Any last questions or comments? Before we all get back to making theater? <laughs> I, I just love seeing everyone take time for the meeting, seeing everyone's yeah. face. It's really great. Um, so and I will say, too, that one of my favorite things about adjudicating is just getting around the state and seeing other shows. Yeah. Um, which I'd like to think I would do anyway, but, you know, maybe I wouldn't get to certain parts of the, the state. And so I can't wait. <laughs> really appreciate everybody coming tonight and taking the time out of your evenings to uh, listen to us all gab on and, and try to give you the updates. And uh, thank you also for um, your questions and your um, challenges to make sure that we um, are, are, are serving in the way that needs to be, that the community needs to be served and that you're being heard. So I really appreciate that and appreciate everybody's time. And uh, I look forward to kind of the constant evolution and seeing this all kind of jump off and springboard again. <laughs> I'm very, very excited. And hopefully you guys are coming out of this excited and want to uh, spread the good word that the Theater Alliance is back and that we're going to be um you know setting new goals for us and start trying to get everybody involved we know that there was a little bit of uh lost faith from some people at one point towards uh you know towards the end there as successful as things were and we're hoping we can bring some people back into the fold keep everybody moving on and just as i said really just unite new hampshire theater because i think the community is a unique one that is very supportive of each other and we all want great theater in the area because uh you know iron sharpens iron uh great theater begets great theater so the more great theater one group is doing the better i think that everybody else tries to rise up and be on that level yes thank you yep thank you everyone thank you all much more to come communicate with us we'll communicate with you <laughs> yeah thanks thanks again Have thank a good you night, everybody, everybody. Um, Irene, do you want to open your meeting back up? I'm going to end this meeting. Yes, I will. <laughs>